Okay, so we had it all together, soldered on the last two, the power thing and the uh, the programming header here, and it's uh, hooked up to the little tiny micro ISP thing from the other video, just showing, yes, it actually does work. And I have over here uh, the program that I'm going to be burning onto it. It just kind of cycles through colors, but you can program it to do whatever you'd like. I'll have to just say is, in this case, sudo makes that I haven't put it into my UDEV yet. goes and then reprograms it. Oh, it's actually programmed to be off. It's uh, modified so it'll go cycle, sudo make. Okay, and now it's programmed to be on. And now that the startup is done, it's just going to cycle through these colors. I'm right now dumping about... Uh, it's 10 volts, so it's only about 5 watts into this thing on average. A little bit less, I guess, 3, 4 watts. There we go. Now I'm dumping about 5 watts into the thing. And uh, it just cycles through the colors, and instead of getting hot and burning out the LEDs, it's going to sink the heat right through the silicone um, circuit boards to the heat sink below. about making this these circuit boards out of material that's this really thin heat sink uh, stuff is to just mount the heat sink stuff to the copper but it matters a lot that we get the correct side down because if you try putting the wrong side through the laminator it'll just peel up and around and get all nasty and it won't survive the, uh, the ferric chloride bath so on most of these they'll have a paper side and a plastic side I believe this is like an HDPE on this side and the plastic side is what you want the, the material to stick to while you're uh, working on it. But we can peel back the paper side. Before we do that though, we're going to cut this to size. You want to have your copper sheet, and I'm using the stuff with the diffuse back. This is used in regular PCB manufacture. And uh, I have the, the, the silicone here, which is available from DigiKey. Uh, just a second, let me uh, put this sheet back down under it. So, like the other one, you want the copper to stick out farther than the, uh, the material you're attaching to it. So, I'm just going to make a circuit board about this big today. Just kind of eyeball that. It's still big enough to hold everything that I want to do. And it fits within the copper area. So, I'm going to take this, cut the copper off. Copper is still bigger than the sheet, and uh, we're basically ready to go here. So, what I'm going to do, this is unfortunately... A pain because the, uh, the the copper rather the silicone wants to stick to the wrong side. We have to peel off the paper side and let it be uh, separated first. So it takes a little bit of practice to really get your finger down in there to get these two sides separated. Sometimes it'll bubble up, but that really isn't a problem. I'm going to apply this face down on the copper now. Ooh. Face down on the copper. And I'm using the silicone sheet underneath with the fabric on top again because it makes it easier to apply pressure evenly throughout it. And you want to kind of go from the inside out, getting any of the air bubbles out. This is really nice because the stuff doesn't stick to your fingers, so it allows you to really kind of knead it apart. Once this is ready, you can then cut this, the copper, to the rough size that you'll need it. doesn't really matter if you get it exact, but you don't want to have your design slammed right to the edge because uh, for some reason after going through the laminator, the edges will somewhat stick. Okay, and now we're going to move on to the next step where we clean this. So, the next part here, we take the, uh, the silicone adhered copper and we put it down into, in this case, running water. It just makes it convenient. And we use steel wool to go clean off the other side of the copper. This will make it so that the, uh, the toner transfer will stick nicely to the copper. And you can see it shines right up as you run the, uh, the steel wool over it. now from somewhat matte to very, very shiny. Okay. So we have this nice shiny sheet here, and we have the, the toner transfer stuff printed out. Remember, these are all flipped left for right. And all we have to do is just place them face down on the copper. And 
and we can just start running it through. Positioning doesn't really matter as long as it's got a little bit of distance to all the sides. Ah, oh, no. Ah, uh, good enough. You're gonna have to run this through a few times. Uh, I, I generally find that only three or four times are all that's necessary. Um, I mean, racer all that's really necessary is one or two. But um, I like running it two, through three or four. It seems to make it so that any chance of there being flaws just goes away. Flip it around each time, upside down, right side up. It seems to just make it go better. Go for Nothing it. Nothing special about this process here. So we have the, the, the pieces of toner transfer paper firmly attached to our now, I guess you want to call it silicone circuit board or something. And all we have to do is just allow this to run under the water. And I'm not going to bother making you guys sit through it. But uh, like all the other times, it'll just peel right off and it'll be ready for transfer. Oh, wow, that was even faster than normal. There's <laughs> one. And I'd imagine this other one's going to come quit. Or not. Okay, well, we'll see. We'll see it when it's ready to go. There we go. And now we're ready for toner trans or for etching. So in my last couple of videos, uh, you notice uh, I haven't been putting anything on? Well, it got on my skin and it just kind of sat there and you don't even notice it, but it stays it for a really long time. So that kind of freaks me out. Now I've just learned my lesson. Use nice, thick uh, gloves. These can be uh, their paper gloves, so they really don't cut through easily. A respirator, because of the fumes from the ferric chloride. And uh, it was just nice bunny feet to prevent it from getting on any other part of my body. Now I'm just preheating the sink with uh, some water. Gonna pull it up now. While it's uh, collecting water, I'm gonna now take some ferric chloride, pour it in a glass dish. I don't know the water is high enough up that it's going to work. Okay, and then I'll just put the stuff, the fresh chloride bath, in the water. This preheats the ferric chloride bath so it'll etch much uh, more nicely. So for the next part of this, I just take my uh, circuit board here. It's the silicone circuit board with the toner on top. And I place it inside a ferric chloride bath. Sink it to the bottom and start rocking it back and forth. This will remove the copper. Okay, so we can check on this every couple of minutes. I can find it again. See how it's up. There it is. So now it's just finished up. You can see that all the copper is gone. It has this kind of ugly yellow color to it now. And so all we do is we go over here and run it under some cold water. Now, you want to avoid getting as much of this, or prevent any of this from getting it on green that you can prevent. Um, so what you'll want to do is, sometimes you'll pat it off or drain it thoroughly, and then just run plenty of water down the drain. Okay. So we have our silicone copper thing here, with the backing still on, the clear uh, uh, backing still on. And uh, we've rinsed it off, I'm gonna start up some water. And I found that uh, you can use steel wool, but sometimes it'll rip the traces off. But if you use sandpaper, this is 100 grit, it works. 220 seems to work a little bit better. I just have the 100 on me. And you can just put it under running water and start sanding away very, very lightly. The, the sandpaper will pull the, the toner off and it won't even make it so it's kind of ugly looking. This makes it so that uh, unlike using solvents like acetone, which can damage it and will cause it to look ugly, this will keep it so that the silicone itself will continue to be very white and it'll get all of the uh, annoying toner back off. Oh, now that's so, an interesting smell. Continue going for this until uh, all of the, uh, the bad is nice and shiny and clean. Now, in this mode, you can let the, uh, the, the uh, stuff here sit like this for a while and, uh, and just like leave it on a shelf and you can clip it out whenever you need to go use them. 
Now we have our circuit boards. They're basically complete and since we're ready to use them we can cut them out. You can't really uh, do it without cutting them since the edges kind of seal down during the lamination process but now that they're out it's it's really easy just to kind of cut your circuit board apart and have it ready for use for whatever you need. This is a red green blue um, LED driver and those are specifically three RGB LEDs uh, for being used uh, at 12 volts. This has a 2 and 2 or 2 2 and 2 2 P and 2 2 2 2 A's on them and that's how we're doing the uh, the power control. It also has an AVR so that I can talk to it and a flexible flat circuit connector so that we can uh, bust them together and communicate to the board. Once the boards are free you can just take them and peel them off you got to be kind of careful this part not to bend the copper too much otherwise it'll make the copper um, kind of uh, curly and not stick very well so you don't get very good thermal conductivity properties. Once this is out, ooh, oh, I messed up the end there but it should be good enough. Simply take it and apply it down to whatever surface you want to apply the circuit board to. In this case I'm applying it to a, a copper heat sink here and just apply pressure firmly all over and it because it's the heat sink compound stuff it's supposed to stick to the surface it's on it sticks right to the material here we're going to also apply the LEDs these are the surface mount footprints for the LEDs so snip snip and peel off again uh, just part of the technique it's generally easier to pull the despite not wanting to do it pull the uh, the backing off of the copper rather than the other way around. So I'm place that there. Take these two. I guess there's a good spot for one. One of the annoyances is that the 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 stuff can shear as it did right here. It uh, didn't shear enough to really throw me off, but as you can see, it kind of did that. And that's because the silicone substrate is uh, kind of loose and uh, it's just kind of the properties of it. It doesn't really affect you very much generally because you're not going to shear enough to really mess anything up. But if you have something that has very high tolerances or low tolerances, then you're not going to be able to use this to, uh, to avoid the shearing. So now we've pasted our silicone circuit boards to our substrate and we are ready to start adding the components. So after we've placed all the parts on we can now take solder paste right here and apply it to the various pads on the board. This makes it so that we don't have to worry about really detailed soldering or it's sticking down or flux or anything since there's flux in the solder paste. So we simply take the solder paste here and then just lay it across whatever pads that we're going to solder stuff to. In this case, this is an AT Tiny 44 here that I'm uh, soldering up against. So this is a Soik package. You don't have to worry about getting each and every individual wire with this. You can kind of just shotgun it. This is uh, one of the uh, uh, transistors up here I'm getting. Kind of harvest some off the pins that you don't need it on. Can kind of be ugly with this. The final product will look worse, but it, it doesn't actually change the functionality of it. I spoke wrong. I thought this was the ribbon version. Turns out this is the standard six pin header version. Um, makes it easier to work with, but not as ridiculous as what I was going for originally. Going back over to the other transistor here and I'm going to repeat that for the rest of the board. So we have the solder paste over all of the pads and now all we have to do is just place down the parts. It's the processor. It's one of the transistors. Another transistor. The last transistor. Ah, 
one of the capacitors, you'll notice I forgot to put paste on the pad. All I gotta do is get paste on the other side of the part. That goes right on in. There's capacitor. Second to last capacitor. Last capacitor. And just repeat for all of the parts. One of the things that uh, happens with most of the, the parts that are surface mount is they will sink their heat through the bottom of the part, but there is a, still a problem that remains for the parts that are like these LEDs where they sink them not just through the, sorry, the leads, but through the bottom of the part. So if it sinks through the leads, you're okay, but if it sinks through the bottom, we have to use this uh, silicone um, heat sink compound here. And uh, I'll take some of that, just dab it on. Don't go crazy like those people over at Apple. And just do that for all of the parts that you're going to do this with. Do my uh, my parts like this almost all the time. What I'll actually do is I'll just go shove it in a toaster oven. But for the sake of this, and because many times you'll be putting these on heat sinks that you can't put in a toaster oven, I'm going to show you that it can be done just by using a regular old soldering iron. Even though I'm using the solder paste, which does make it substantially easier, um, we can use uh, just a conventional soldering iron to put it down. Just get all the pads warm. Apply pressure to what needs pressure. Put the parts in place, especially things like the soik here. Just put it down around the outside edges before you go for the internal parts. And just repeat this through the whole chip, or through the whole process. So just like any other kind of circuit board, you can just solder wires directly to them. I'm going to use this fine, I think it's a 32 gauge, no, 30 gauge uh, wire and uh, solder it straight to them. So I just strip one end. With the lower stripper. Yeah, yeah. Take some solder here. And like any other circuit board, you just put the solder down first. Bam! Take this. A little extra wire goes right on. And you just do this for the rest of the board and we'll have it all wired up. We're all wired up and ready for testing.